This is Charter Local Edition. Brad Pomerantz here in the Inland Empire. We're joined today by LaDonna Jemson. She is a councilwoman in the city of Moreno Valley, second largest city in Riverside County, running for re-election. And I'm sure that when you speak with your constituents, you let them know there's been a lot of exciting economic development in your city. Absolutely. I mean, I'm looking at a list and it just goes on and on. Alessandro Plaza, El Pollo Loco, Farm Market, Food for Less, Hyundai, Moreno, Marketplace, the Mall, the Plaza. I mean, uh, it's pages and pages. It is. And we're excited about that. Uh, Karma, we're bringing back auto manufacturing made in Moreno Valley. Wow. That's pretty exciting. We'll have cars coming off the line at the end of this year. I gotta ask you, Councilwoman, how have you been able to do this? And I ask you, and I want you to consider the following. We're just coming out of a recession. Mm -hmm. Moreno Valley, prior to you arriving, had some, um, let's say, conflict on the city council. We had some challenges. Yeah, we had some challenges. <laughs> we had, I think, someone indicted and some people recalled. A lot of competition from Riverside, mm -hmm. from San Bernardino, from Paris, from Hemet. No redevelopment money. Redevelopment's gone. That's right. So how have you been able to attract so many new businesses? Well, I feel that one of the factors was that we hired an awesome economic development director. You know, he knew his stuff. He came in. Personally, I was concerned about pay salary mm. let them show us All what right. we can do first but you know what i'm glad that that was mm. kind of overridden right he's been doing an awesome job the other thing is is we give benefits that some of the other cities don't we have a higher moval program that actually allows right. for the businesses to be able to work with utility uh, re reductions get all kinds of credits right. if i remember correctly on under higher moval I think smaller businesses will get a rebate on electricity, is that right? That's correct. I'm trying to remember, what else does Hire Movell do? I can't remember. Um, let me actually, because I want to, yeah, uh, no. it helps with the hiring practice right. so they can use Employment Resource Center right, right. to get some assistance. The utility impact is more so for the larger than the smaller. Okay, thank you for correcting but me. But there are different Thank you for levels. correcting me. Yes. Um, so given this success, where do you go from here? Because obviously you've done well, but what does mm -hmm. 2017, 2018 look like? Well, I will tell you both personally and from a city aspect, mm -hmm. because I am always speaking with our economic development uh, director, Mike Lee, and encouraging him to, if possible, let's do something more like medical entertainment something that's a little bit different than warehousing and it's interesting you mention that as you know you see Riverside opened a medical school a couple of years ago yes uh, they're looking well their class is 50 percent IE residents by definition mm -hmm. and 50 percent from elsewhere they're hoping to have these students once they graduate stay here right so they're gonna need medical office space absolutely and Moreno Valley's next door to UCR and you know it's happening it's happening. We have the University Health Systems, previously known as Riverside Community right. Hospital, that is growing by leaps and bounds. And that's really going to form an impact in our city. So that's being encouraged and helped. Um, technically, it's in Riverside, but uh, the right. residents of Moreno Valley will also be able to uh, work off of the what's happening on the base, right. the March Joint Powers and so on. And I also heard through the grapevine that there's going to be a major complex coming in that's being discussed right now. It's not officially okay. out there, but it's going to, to border on my district, nice. which is Edgemont. And that's, I'm just so thrilled about the development that's going on in one of the lowest socioeconomic areas of Moreno Valley. With development yes. comes jobs, That's right. comes traffic. Mm -hmm. And I'm wondering, are there capital projects, are there transportation infrastructure projects that Moreno Valley has been able to put online to ease congestion? Well, um, getting, you know, there? That's, yeah. getting there, getting <laughs> there. I mean, it's the tricky. Only, it's, it, it's tricky. That's right. I mean, it's not a secret about the World Logistics Center right. and the process that we went through, and that was approved. 
And of course, it was a 3-2 vote. Um, I was one of the two that voted, voted against. against because of my concerns about the impact to the community as far as can our uh, infrastructure right. withhold, you know, what is going to be happening. For 14,000 truck trips daily. What about jobs, though? And depending on what type of jobs they are, mm. that was a concern of mine. There was discussion about uh, higher tech jobs, but in fewer number versus warehouse jobs. You can call it whatever you want. Logistics, most of the time, is warehouse. Mm -hmm. But it does bring a different factor. It does bring but technology and so warehouse jobs, on. if properly structured, mm -hmm. can be well-paying with benefits. Look at some of the Amazon Absolutely. distribution centers. Yes. I mean, Amazon, as I understand it, is known for being a strong employer, a, a friend of the employees. Mm -hmm. Could World Logistics not adopt a similar model? They could, and we're hoping that that will be the case. We are um, looking forward positively that mm -hmm. that will happen. Okay. And if that happens, we encourage it and we love it. I want to talk about your city council. Yes. Which, as we mentioned a couple of years ago, went through some change as a result of indictments and recall, but it's a new day yes. and new membership. But a couple of weeks ago, there was some contention over uh, the question of certain ethics reforms, which are not surprising given that what happened a few years ago. Right. Talk to me about oof, the, the, the heated nature of city councils and how we can get back to a place where we understand what's appropriate and not appropriate in terms of public debate. Well, and I think what happens also, and we're talking about, I just want to clarify, Please. the conflict of interest. Right. Okay. I, you know, Mayor Pro Tem Gaiba and I had been mm. working on this issue for a while. We had been working with the attorneys. Mm -hmm. It started out as an ordinance proposal mm -hmm. uh, by our interim attorney. Then we downplayed it to a uh, resolution mm. because basically those who were in charge of enforcing and hold people accountable, the, um, it goes from council to attorney. Mm -hmm. So when you have an ordinance, the council is accountable and holds it. Uh, and then when you have the resolution, it's now the attorney. I see. So it's a tough predicament. There are actually already laws that exist regarding conflict of interest, but it's a matter of enforcing them. And so that's why it turned into more of a discussion at the last city council meeting instead of deciding this is how we're going to move forward. I, I just wonder though, I mean, you just hate to see a city council descend in, mm -hmm. in such a way. Right. And you know, emotions start to build and one particular member felt as if the proposal was targeting that member because he's a public employee of a certain agency and mm -hmm. this prevents votes if you work for that particular agency. And so, you know, how, how do we get to a place where we don't take it so personally? Well, I don't know if that's ever going to happen, uh, to well be stated. honest it is with politics. you. You know, most of the time yeah. it can be personal. Mm -hmm. it, the intention was not to attack one certain right. council member, um, regardless of what the 460s say and who they're getting mm -hmm. money right. from. It's an ethical issue. Mm -hmm. It's very, it, it's all about ethics, and that's why it's called a conflict of interest. Because it comes down to, and I was telling your mm -hmm. young lady when I was talking with her, it comes down to a human nature feeling that you feel indebted mm. to someone who gives you a certain amount of money. You'll come back? Of course. Her name is LaDonna Jempson. <laughs> she is uh, she's a city councilwoman in Moreno Valley Correct. running for re-election. I'm Brad Pomerantz, Charter Local Edition.